Yo, what's good, y'all? Welcome back to Kip Taj. And we did the first three, point guard, shooting guard, small forwards. And today, of course, as you see in the title, top five power forwards right now. As I've been doing this, it's like a power rankings thing. These are all subject to change over time. So if you discover this list like a year from now, please don't murder me in the comments or be too offended because this was made summer 2017. We're ranking the top five power forwards. Like I said, we did point guard, shooting guard, small forwards. Um, all those can be found three most recent videos on my channel if you're curious but yeah today's power forwards if you enjoy this video don't forget to leave a like comment your list down below please do not be offended by any content in this video i've seen it so much recently doing these lists um guys their opinions please don't be too upset with what i do um you know just my opinion here and we're gonna get right into this number five i'm going with clippers power forward blake griffin it's really hard to do these lists for guys like Blake Griffin and put guys like him on here and rank them because we haven't seen enough of healthy Blake Griffin in general over the last, I don't know, three, four years. I mean, he's really coming to his own as a player, of course, we know, but he's also showed us that he really can't stay healthy over time. You know, I don't I can't even remember the last time he played a full healthy season or over 75 games. The Clippers, they've been stuck in that, you know, 4-5 type spot over the last few years. Just nothing really happening there. They get to the first or second round, lose out, it gets old, and we're not really taking them seriously anymore. And on top of that, Blake Griffin hasn't been able to stay healthy for enough time for him to really get better. I feel like Blake Griffin, that season in, in the 2013-14 season is still his best season and the best Blake Griffin we've seen. If you guys don't remember, he finished third in MVP voting that year. He had a monster year and the Clippers were looking real good. But since then, he hasn't been able to stay healthy. We haven't really seen flashes of a new and improved Blake Griffin from that, which would, yeah, it would be a hard task because he was already so good then. But the point here is that Blake Griffin's a hard player to rank because we don't really know how good he is. And his health issues probably, you know, screwed up his development as a player, which is always a sad thing. But now it is going to be a lot more interesting this year, though, with Blake Griffin for sure. And that's just because of the fact that we see Chris Paul moving on, who was the unquestioned leader of this team, the guy that made everything go. Blake Griffin was never really a leader. And now we get to see him try to do that. I think it's going to be really interesting. and We're going to be able to evaluate Blake Griffin better because with Chris Paul there, we knew that there was someone stabilizing the ship that was the Clippers, no pun intended. Um, and Chris Paul, of course, is one of those guys that you put him on a team like this and the team is going to do well. And Chris Paul always had the good net rating. And something I noticed was, you know, the Clippers really didn't do well at all when Chris Paul wasn't playing. And when Blake Griffin wasn't playing, they could actually hold their own and still be pretty effective. So that kind of makes you wonder a little bit about the value of Blake Griffin, or maybe they're just so used to playing without him that it doesn't even matter at this point, and it's just hard to incorporate him when he was playing. Either way, it's definitely going to be easier to judge Blake Griffin's value and greatness in the game of basketball this year because he's going to be in the spotlight more in LA this year than he was last year. I put him at number five because when we talk about Blake Griffin as a player, he's a guy that can score really well. He's athletic, even though you know, he's not as out of control as he used to be. He doesn't really go for all those high-flying dunks and, and crazy finishes around the rim as much as he used to. He's become a more patient, a smarter player that, you know, he's trying to use his skill rather than his athleticism more these days. Maybe because he gets injured so much, he's thinking, look, I should just scale it back when I'm playing so that, you know, I reduce the risk that I get injured since I've been getting injured so much. I don't know why it, what it is, but he's definitely not attempting as many of those crazy plays as he used to. He has evolved. He's come a long way as a playmaker at that power forward position. It's interesting to see what he's done. He can find shooters. He can handle the ball really well. Um, his playmaking game is actually a lot better than you'd expect. His defense is still, I would say, his primary downfall. And, you know, when you think about Blake Griffin, it's just... You know, the guy, he's getting a lot better at shooting, but he's not really using his athleticism as much. The post play, he can do that. He can pass the ball, but as a defender, as a rebounder, he just doesn't really assert himself as much as he used to. And I think that that's hurting him. And, and the injuries also don't help us in terms of, you know, judging how good this guy really is. And hopefully we get a full season out of him so we can see what he's where he's at what he is as a player today now we spent enough time on that one number four i went with denver power forward paul Millsap. now paul Millsap 
is a guy that I think, and I say this every single year, he's vastly underrated. He's a guy that I should put into these discussions all the time. Um, top five power forwards. He definitely belongs there. He's a guy that can do everything. I mean, he's really got so many great abilities on the basketball court from scoring the ball from all ranges. He can play make and his defense is fantastic. I mean, he's really one of the underrated defensive players, but he's also a guy that can run an offense. He's a guy that can play his role he's really versatile because he can be the number one two or three guy on a team and he accepts that role he's selfless he's got super high basketball iq he knows exactly what he's super patient he fits into almost any offense in the nba he's really flexible and a guy that any team would want um and he's definitely gonna have a high impact on a team's success he will bring the denver nuggets win totals up and that's just 100 percent for sure we know we're getting at a paul Millsap. he's more versatile than blake griffin he's healthier than blake griffin um and he defends a whole lot better and he's the guy i'd rather have on my team because he's easier easier to place i don't really know how blake griffin fits onto you know most teams how he's going to be as a leader next season because how do you play your offense through Blake Griffin? Is he just like the go-to guy for everything? Does he make all the plays? Is he a post presence? What is he doing? We'll definitely see more of that next season. But Paul Millsap, I feel like he's just, you just plug him in anywhere and he works very well. And I just think that he's a guy that always makes your team better. I mean, he's good at everything that you need him to do. He'll play your role. Like I said, I think that he's just a very flexible player in any offense, defense, whatever. Now, on number three, I went with Cleveland Cavaliers power forward Kevin Love. Now, I know Kevin Love, the most criticism that he receives is likely because of him underperforming in the NBA Finals. Well, we could talk about this year, last year, when I say this year, 2017 Finals, last year, 2016 Finals. Kevin Love simply hasn't been there really performing at a high level on that stage, which is just an area... It's very important because, of course, as we know, the NBA Finals are the most important stage in the NBA. Um, and if you're going to bring your A game, you're going to bring it at the NBA Finals. That's the goal. You got to perform. You got to show you're a big dog. And that's that's, you know, where legacies are decided. And while I know Kevin Love hasn't been super strong in that area, I think a lot of that can be attributed to the fact that Kevin Love has never really had a steady role in the Cleveland offense. He's never really known his purpose how much or how little to do in the flow of the offense and he's been taken out of his natural game to fit this uh cleveland cavaliers play style which works and we know cleveland is a great team so i'm not critiquing the system in which they use but kevin loves addition to the offense is a little bit spotty just considering what he's capable of as an offensive player but as you know when you're playing with lebron james and you throw kyrie irving in there as well your role is going to be very much limited at least compared to what you had before kevin love was the entire minnesota timberwolves offense and while yeah they didn't make the playoffs any any year that he was there you know he still did a great job of being that guy and they just didn't get enough help around him he was traded for wiggins and anthony bennett as we all know to the cleveland cavaliers a few years back and he's been you know struggling a little bit to find exactly what his role is he's definitely gotten better at it and I honestly don't think he got worse. I mean, people are talking about Kevin Love is not the same Minnesota Kevin Love. I hear that a lot. Like, man, if we, if Minnesota Kevin Love was on the Cavs, man, they'd be a much better team. This year, Kevin Love, I think, was at his best in terms of how he's playing. I know that he didn't have as big of a role, but if you look at the stats for 36 minutes, I mean, they're pretty similar. Kevin Love doesn't play as much as he used to. Um, and people might say, oh, his numbers aren't as good, but Kevin Love's numbers are very solid and he doesn't play as much as you guys think. If you take the per 36 numbers, compare them with Cavs and Tim Wolves, I mean, it's not, it's not that far off and he's taking less shots and a less part of the offense. So when you think about sample size and stuff like that and exactly how many tries he's getting, how, what his conversion rate is, you know, per each shot or you know, narrow it down to a certain statistic. Kevin Love is still as effective as he used to be. He's just not being used as much because he's not the number one guy at the center of the offense. He's just as good as, of a player as he was. He can still score very well in the post. He's strong enough to body guys down there. He gets a ton of rebounds and he's a great three-point shooter, just shooter in general. He's a great offensive weapon and he's a guy that checks all the boxes on that end. I mean, he scores very well and from every spot you need him to and he rebounds super well and he's elite at both those things. 
and this separates him i believe from paul Millsap and blake griffin because for me paul Millsap doesn't really do one thing good enough defense i would say but paul Millsap isn't really that you know that player that can do so much that can carry your team that has as much talent as a guy like kevin love and blake griffin i don't think that he does enough i also don't think that he's healthy enough if we're considering that as like one of the factors here but i put kevin love at three for the reasons i said at number two i'm going with warriors forward draymond green this guy to me i know that people love to talk shit about you know how he kicks people in the nuts and he tries to injure guys and he's a loud mouth and he should just shut up and and he's one of the most hated players in the nba i get that i understand that but i can't be biased with this list i'm with you guys by the way i don't like this guy draymond green but look you gotta respect the skill the value of a guy like draymond green the warriors wouldn't be quite the team they are without him because he really keeps everyone involved he gets everybody going he's got incredibly high basketball iq his defense is top notch the guy just won rookie of the year but he can guard all five positions he can switch on to any player he reacts extremely well as a defensive player he can block a center and steal it from a point he just does everything as a defensive player he's six foot seven strong quick agile the guy can cover all the boxes as a defensive player that's exactly what he does he's also a very good rebounder and assist game is on point with that eight assists a game i think seven or eight i think it was eight i mean the guy passes so well he's the best passer i believe on the warriors him and steph i mean yeah it's kind of a toss-up but still the guy sees everything he knows how to get his guys involved and i just think the warriors his value to the warriors is unquestioned because nobody can defend like him on the team nobody sees their guys and has that same iq in terms of you know you got to hit the right man you got to get everybody involved he he keeps them going i mean he really is the anchor of this team i don't think they would have won the championship without him i really don't i think that's how good of a player he is i think he's so slept on and underrated honestly because people are looking at the scoring stats you're looking at the guy who get buckets but man you need people to give those guys buckets you need people to defend the other guys that are giving you buckets like Draymond Green does that. I got to put him here. At number one, this should be an easy one. Anthony Davis is still the number one power forward in the league. I know that he hasn't made it to the playoffs except for that one time, which, you know, they didn't even win a playoff game that year. But Anthony Davis is pound for pound the best power forward in the NBA simply because he has every single important skill or, or facet just down. I mean, the guy does literally everything, checks all the boxes. I know I've been saying check the boxes, uh, too much in this video but look anthony davis for what he is he's 6 11 athletic long wingspan and he can shoot the ball and he blocks shots at a super high rate he rebounds he scores like crazy i mean he's insane he's far ahead of everybody else in this list just because he's an unstoppable force he can score on anybody and he can defend anybody and he grabs a ton of rebounds so if you have this guy and he's just, and his his size is just too much like you can't do anything about anthony davis he's not he's he's one of those guys that he's gonna get his buckets no matter what i mean that's just how he works and there aren't, aren't enough players like that for us to be talking about anthony davis like he's some type of scrub anthony davis is a top 10 player in the nba for sure and you know even though he hasn't get to the playoffs really so far in his young career he's still the guy that everybody would want he's still the guy that you'd pick over any other power forward in the league and he's the best big man in basketball period because he just does everything and he does it efficiently he does it well he's got so much potential as well even though it doesn't really factor into skill at the moment he's still number one and not it's not close so i'm taking anthony davis over every other power forward so to recap one davis two green three love four Millsap, five griffin let me know your list down below if you think i'm forgetting someone shout out to serge abaka i think he was my honorable mention yeah Unless I'm forgetting who, because I think I remember Serge Ibaka was one of the guys that I just left off this list, but there might be another guy that I'm just forgetting that's also good, LaMarcus Aldridge, that's who I was thinking of, but LaMarcus Aldridge is definitely not what he used to be, I don't I don't think he's better than Serge Ibaka, I, I'd take Serge Ibaka over him, so I'd say Serge Ibaka is my honorable mention, let me know if I really actually forgot anybody important that should be on this list, please, down below in the comments, um, and yeah, that's gonna do it. Subscribe if you're new. Don't get offended in the comments, but comment your list. Like your shit up if you enjoy. And uh, I'm out. Thanks for watching, y'all. Peace.